Hello, welcome, and thank you for taking time to join me today. I am Morjax. We are playing Mordheim City of the Damned, and I'm coming at you with a little bit of a build tutorial today. Uh, this is a rank 10 unit here, and with the uh, soon advent of player progression, we may not have access to max level builds uh, anymore right from the start. So I wanted to get some of these build videos uh, put together here. And uh, I'm not going to have too much preamble here, here, but this is one of my melee units in a hand of five tournament. I did end up losing, but I think it's a reasonably strong build. I just didn't get uh, very good dice. So I'm going to jump right in here. The, the main idea is really staying power and a focus on criticals and a focus on stunning the enemy and, and just sort of lasting longer than they do. So we're going to jump right into it here. Uh, right off the bat, in terms of lasting longer than the enemy, I have maxed out my toughness at 18 points. And uh, leadership is also maxed out. Accuracy is also maxed out. So, the weapon that I have equipped is a uh, Sigmarite Warhammer of Misfortune and a Shield of Shielding. So what that means is it's a minus two crit resistance of the enemy each time you swing in. And the Sigmarite Warhammer has uh, dodge bypass, it has critical chance, and neg to divine wrath, which doesn't matter in this case. That's the chance that your spells will explode back on you. And the reason I'm single-handing instead of two, if you look at the top left, uh, right here at the offense points, we have nine. And when I single-wield instead of dual-wield or two-handed with a weapon, it only costs two red pills. So we can attack four times. And what I'm trying to... <clears throat> What I'm trying to go for here is to swing in as many times as possible to stack that minus 2% crit resistance. So our crit chance is only 25%, which isn't phenomenal, but little by little we can whittle away their crit resistance, and I found this to be reasonably effective. Uh, and then our shield has a rune which is melee resistance. So let's take a look at our armor here. I've got plus 4 accuracy and max accuracy to try to bump up the crit chance there. And uh, I went with heavy armor just because I plan to put this particular sister into close combat a lot. And helmet of celerity, I ended up putting initiative um, on this helmet to try to make these units move first. So my, I wanted my melee units to move before my spellcasters so I could set up my front lines. Uh, that was important to me in the hand of five tournament because you only have five heroes. So I wanted to set the front line and then bring up my spellcasters from back behind. You could easily do something like a, a movement or, um, you know, whatever you like. There's a lot of options, and uh, I'll, I'll uh, let you choose for yourself, but that's what I picked there. And then in the offhand, I had a Warhammer of Havoc and Misfortune. So, you know, I don't end up really using this that much, and the situation where you would use it is if you're really at an advantage. This would help you to accelerate uh, how fast you're willing down the opponent. So the... Sigmarite Warhammer of Havoc gives you a pl plus to crit chance, and then in the offhand, you would get a plus to, or uh, I'm sorry, you would uh, deteriorate their critical resistance. And one thing to note, the first attack, I believe, costs two, the second attack costs three, the third attack costs four, so I think you can only attack three times with this dual wielding, um, but you're, you are going to do more damage uh, swinging in. So, it's a matter of personal preference. I was going for staying power, so I opted for the single hand and the shield. Let us move on to skills. The only active skill is one that this Sister Superior already has, and that's for Sigmar. And that allows, uh, it increases the movement range of one ally by three meters for one turn. So it helps you to move your guys along if you need that. Uh, I use that sometimes, not a ton. So we'll get into, this is a lot of passive skills here. We'll get into it. Uh, first one up is Fatality. After dealing melee damage, critical hit increases by 4% for one turn. So the first attack, remember that she gets four attacks here, and each one subtracts their crit resistance by 2%. Now this adds another 4%. So essentially our crit chance is going up by 6% every time we hit. Uh, and we can bring in another unit, and that, that critical uh, resistance reduction is still in place for the second unit that comes in. So if we're piling up two or three of our sisters with this type of skill layout at once on one character, you can really destroy their crit resistance. So uh, on the first attack, we would have a 25% crit chance, not, not including the crit reduction. 
and it would go up by 4 to 29%, and then up to 33%. Oh, I'm doing math in my head. This is dangerous. And then up to uh, 37%. So it's a reasonably good chance that you're going to crit once or twice each round with each melee unit. Next one here is Underdog. When engaged with two or more en enemies, increases melee critical hit chance by 10%. So that's just a little buff if you happen to get outnumbered. Best case scenario, you, you should really be doubling up on them, but again, this gives you a little bit more resilience. Next one here is Divine Aegis. This is a ranged resistance of 15%. You can see in the bottom, we've got a 63% range resistance, 50% melee resistance, 38% stun resistance. So nothing crazy, nothing to write home about, but just sort of a nice passive buff, I think. Uh, next one here is Absolute Faith. Increases the chance to pass all alone fear, terror, and route tests. And I should mention that Divine Aegis and Absolute Faith are unique to the Sisters of Sigmar. Um, so what this Absolute Faith buys us is, uh, again, a little bit more staying power in melee, and this was definitely chosen for the Hand of Five tournament, where I've got two or three melee units that are holding the front lines, and I need them to stay there, even if the enemy warband is all melee. So this uh, was the idea of this was to reduce the chances that I would flee from all alone, suffer from fear or terror, and they already have pretty good leadership, uh, and also bump up the route chance, so we, we are more likely to stay in battle. And then the last one here is Shield Specialist. Now, you could really pick whatever you want. Um, I was running a uh, kind of the sword and board approach, so I could get four attacks every round, so I was already using a shield, and I figured, eh, why not? Um, this one I'm not quite as sure about, so maybe you could swap something else out if you wanted. Uh, I think it works pretty well. It increases the melee resistance and parry chance by 10% when equipped with a shield. So the parry chance is 70%, which is reasonably good. Um, you know, not totally blow them out of the water, but again, this is, it's, it's not uh, totally focused, this particular build, on any one aspect, but it's got a bit of crit re uh, resistance reduction, and it has a bit of uh, crit chance, and it has a bit of bonus to be up against multiple foes. So I feel like it's a pretty well-balanced critical slash stun uh, build. And I should also say, I should have said this way the heck sooner, but the, the chances to stun every time you crit against an enemy, they have to pass a test. I think it's a toughness test? I wanna say it's a toughness test. And if they fail that test, then they're stunned, uh, and then you're, you have much better chance to hit, much better chance to crit. So the idea is just to incapacitate their units one by one. Uh, I use this for my Hand of Five tournament warband, but you could just as easily use it in a 10-man warband, uh, and, and I think do quite well. The more people you have with this uh, Rune of Misfortune that reduces critical hit resistance, the better and better your build is gonna work. And you could even have a couple of people on the uh, front end of the initiative ladder with a lot of this Rune of Misfortune, so they reduce the crit hit resistance for the enemy unit for this round, and then you could have people a little bit slower in the initiative ladder with maxed out crit chances, so they can come in after there's no more crit resist and just lay down crit after crit after crit after crit. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got a few more uh, build videos coming at you. Let me know if you have any special requests or ideas for build videos. I hope you enjoyed and we will see you next time.